taking up with this Oh, sure. I like to sit up close to here with this sign. I'm going to sit back here. Too. City Park Authority meeting today, April 26th. Uh, we will ask Gallon Rossetter to give us a report on the qualifications. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and, and thank you, Park Authority members as well as members of the public who've taken your time to attend today. Um, uh, over the past few months, uh, uh, Can everybody hear them? Yes. Yes. Okay. Speak a little louder. Yes, sir. Um, Maybe uh, you should get a mic if everybody's going to speak today. Here, you know, I'll I'll stand up so you can, and that may help. Good idea. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, over the past few months, uh, we were asked uh, by the mayor and the parking authority to look at. Uh, vehicles that would make it so that the city would not be in the position that many other cities find themselves, where to be able to fund government they need to raise taxes. One of the ideas that came out of those discussions was to look at uh, potentially uh, leasing the parking assets of the city. By that we mean the meters, uh, lot six, and the intermodal, and the uh, garages that the parking authority has, in return for an upfront payment to let the private sector actually run those instead of having the city do that or the parking authority do that and do it more efficiently with the idea that the city would get an upfront payment in return. <coughs> that upfront payment, rather than raising taxes to raise revenue, would give the city the opportunity to disinvest their money in parking, which is not really a governmental function that can be done quite well by the private sector and let the city in instead take that upfront payment that they would get in return and invest in things that only a city that can provide. Enhanced public safety, better infrastructure. And those very issues were part of um, what became a term sheet which was presented to city council which uh, they voted unanimously on April 12 to approve a request for qualifications 
for a parking concession as long as certain things were part of that, including that the upfront payment be used for those purposes that we just discussed. This process is not a final approval of anything. It is simply a, and the vote that we would ask the Park Authority to take today would simply be to authorize the request for qualifications to be sent out to potential entities who would be interested in bidding on the parking. This process um, is a two-part process, and we're only on the first part. Um, the two-part process is, and they're all initials, there's an RFQ and an RFP. The R, and, and we did it this way for a couple of very important reasons. An RFQ is the request for qualifications, and we're doing it that way because we want to test, or actually the parking authority has insisted, before we are committed to all of the fees of such a transaction, and actually going down this course at all, we want to make sure that there's interest in the market from private entities who would want to do this, who would say, you know what, if you're willing to lease us your parking assets for 30 years, we'll give you $20 million at least. And actually that's one of the things that the RFQ says. They also need to not put in their bid and give us the number, but tell us about their qualifications, both at running parking assets, at improving parking meters, at doing the very types of things that would need to be done to improve the parking experience in Wilkes-Barre, which is another piece of it. You're with the, the law firm of... Uh... Sir, could I, would I be able to just, um, after I finish this statement, what we were going to do is I wanted to take your question and open it up actually to public comment. We're going to have 20 minutes for that, Good. but I want to make sure, because I think there will be a lot of questions that will come out of this. I just wanted to give you all the perspective for this, if I could. Um, and so this RFQ and what we're doing today is really an opportunity for the parking authority uh, and the city to find out are there private entities interested in paying at least $20 million for the right to lease the city's and the authority's parking assets for a period of 30 years. Um, uh, now what we'd like to do, and I really defer to the, the, the chairman of the parking authority, one thing that may be important, since we do have members of the public here, is to set, set aside, let's say, 20 minutes for public comment, if we could, three minutes per person, just so everybody gets a chance to ask their questions and raise their points. Um, and then, you know, we would be able to have that input before the authority, you know, goes about considering uh, the approval of the RFQ and the other issues related to the parking concession. But I really defer to the chairman and, and the authority. I just ask if you keep it minimum of three minutes, maximum of five, because we have a lot of discussion that's going to take place today. And uh, if you have any questions from the parking authority members, I'd like you to direct them to Mr. Tom Torbrick, our executive director. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody have anything? Ron. Yes, sir. Yes. You're with Fox Rothschild, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, you had mentioned RFPs and RFQs. Were those followed in your hiring as well? And if so, may we see copies of the bid process and add copy of where this may have been advertised out prior to just hiring Fox Rothschild without any input from other firms who, local firms, who may have also been interested in doing what Fox is doing? The, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, a couple of things. First, on the specific part of your question, uh, as you may know, the parking authority law uh, does not have a provision where professional services contracts for engineers, lawyers, consultants are competitively bid. They actually do it for construction projects. This is not one of those. So that's that's the, 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 the legal answer, but I think that said, the important thing that you raise is that uh, public bidding in certain sectors can be a very good thing as long as you've got something concrete to bid on. Uh, in this instance, that's why we have a professional team together, so we can put together an RFQ, and then we will, sort of consistent with the thrust of your question, have an RFP process for the concession itself. But for the professional team, that's not been the, the, the practice of the authority, and it was not the practice here. I'd like to ask uh, some questions. Uh, do you have anything else, uh, My only other question was um, with Fox arbitrarily hiring 
um, one of your partner's brother's firm to charge this authority $35,000 in outrageous fees for speaking with members of the press, such as Mr. O'Boyle and, and uh, Josh Moyer from the Citizen's Voice, charging the rate of $5 per minute every time a reporter called uh, Mr. Murphy to ask for bids, and he would say things like, I I'm sorry, I'm busy with my brother's campaign, I can't help you right now. He was going ahead and billing this board a minute's worth of, of the board's time just for answering that ridiculous question. Was an RFP or RFQ put out before hiring goals? Or once again, we're going to get the legal answer where although we are uh, asking taxpayers to pay for upgrades to this authority's buildings and properties, we can go ahead and arbitrarily hire anyone we want. Is that pretty much the way it goes? Well, actually, we put together a uh uh, a, a qualified team with unique experience in this area. Uh, um, so our the firm, answer is no. Can, can I? Can I'm, I I'm just the, asking a yes or no question, well, and you're gonna, treating it like an open-ended. Right. I was going to say that. Uh, um, so in this process, uh, our firm uh, has been uh, worked on two successful public-private partnerships in Wilkes-Barre. We are we were counsel to the the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission on public-private partnerships. Council to the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission on public-private partnerships. We are involved in the public-private partnership for Pittsburgh's parking concession <coughs> transaction, and we're involved in drafting the legislation, as are many, uh, for public-private partnerships in Pennsylvania now that would permit them for transportation. So we would suggest that our qualifications are somewhat unique. Uh, similarly, I'm not disputing the, the, yours. The, I'm the, disputing and goals. Then, and, and goals, I would just say that um, uh, one of the exciting things that J.J. Murphy brings that the other transactions did not have is somebody on the team with the knowledge of how the city runs and how the city operates so that, because we need to look 30 years down the, the, the road as to how this will, you know, enhance city economic development and other operational issues that J.J. Murphy has unique insight in from his years as city administrator. And to have somebody like that on this team, I would surmise that the other projects that have not gone to closing, if they had a J.J. Murphy, uh, it could be very well they'd be in a different spot. And so he provides that local insight that we might not have otherwise. Yes, sir. And that's the J.J. Murphy. He also knows the inside of it, and you got people that worked with him given him free information so his bill shouldn't be very high. Thank you. Very good point. Very good point. And I think the rest of the people at the table should be uh, identifying themselves. I don't know whether they're city employees or... Oh, yes, are. sir. I'm not, I, my name is Jack Henry. I live in Wilkes-Barre. I don't know any... I don't We're know not any employees Anne. in the city, Mr. Parker. Pardon? We're not employees, no. You're not? No. I'm a well, financial advisor. My name is Dick Tarski. I'm a financial advisor, financial planner. Crook. For the city? For no, I you? work independent. I have my own Well, department. you shouldn't be sitting back here with us. I'm on the board. I am on the parking authority board, just like the other people. Like you're Mom not Jay. a city employee? No. You're not they're all, employee? all volunteers. You're in the city? None of us, no. They're, they're volunteers. We do. We volunteer. We don't get paid anything. Yeah, we but get I don't live in the city, right? Yes, I do. I live in Parsons Manor. Oh, well, that's what I asked. We all live in the city. I don't think we should be on the authority if we didn't live on this, in the city. Neither do I. That's why I asked a question. Thank you, Mr. Kentucky. Yes, uh, Bob Kalabaski, does anybody else want to go first or no? No, go ahead. I think, I think members of the board, what has the town outrage is what's been printed in the paper. That Mayor Layton pressured this board go with this firm. Also, Mayor Layton is a known liar. He's nothing more than a political racketeer, and in my, it's in my opinion, and he's a thief and a liar. But I want to ask the board, if law enforcement comes in, are you going to cooperate? Because as far as I'm concerned, this is nothing more, in my opinion, of the mayor overstepping his bounds. I mean, how many board members knew about the campaign contribution? And I think of one of my favorite mayors named Michael Bloomberg said what these campaign contributions are is nothing more than legalized bribery. I'm not saying his firm did anything wrong, but 
But would you have voted for this if you've known all this stuff is coming out now? What we're going to do here is pilfer the taxpayers. That's who's going to end up paying for this. Point. Something Mr. J.J. Murphy was directly involved with was the towing contract for the city of Wilkes-Barre. It wasn't going to cost the tax. Wasn't going to cost anybody anything more. Nothing. We went from towing cars from seventy to seventy-five dollars and twenty dollars a day to two hundred, to four hundred, five hundred, six hundred, fifty, sixty dollars a day. Who gets ten thousand dollars in campaign contributions from the tower? The mayor. I wrote letters and warned everybody: you're going to get robbed. It's exactly what's happening. Went to the chief of police to tell him it was a scam. Asked him for a meeting. Never called me to discuss prices. Who ran the towing company for six and a half years? The chief of police, the secretary's husband. Who was in business with him? Getting cars on consignment and selling them on Blackman Street? The police captain. Who was involved with him? Former corporations? Attorney Vinsco. This is what's going to happen here, in my opinion. But I'm asking this board, what could we do to stop this? To stop it. What's going to happen is this. The person who parks in those parkades is going to pay. The person who gets fined at those meters is going to pay. Where is this? You know the figures. I've seen the figures. Where is this thing going to come from the, to pay this $20 million? It's the taxpayer. It's the person who wants to visit downtown. It's the person who works downtown who's going to get robbed. Robbed. And what I would like the board, and I'm asking publicly, I would like to see a copy of J.J. Murphy's resume. Where is this man qualified to do this? And I believe when there was a transition committee, there was a, there was a lawsuit filed, and information was in that lawsuit that the transition committee said not to hire J.J. Murphy as the city administrator. That's the opinion, or that's what I heard. It was in a lawsuit. So my question to this board is, what could we do to stop this? It's the taxpayers that are going to get robbed. And my understanding is that there were certain meetings with certain people with the mayor. The city of Wilkes-Barre is $100 million in debt. We are going to end up being a distressed city. And this is to save the city. This money, we need this money. And that's what this is about, to save it. The problem is, who's going to pay for this? It's the people that park, and it's the taxpayers. And I'm asking you people to just look at the comments that have been printed on the internet. The mayor is nothing, in my opinion, nothing more than a gangster. A gangster is all he is, a political gangster. That's enough, Bob. That's enough. All right, well, Paul, I mean, this Bob, is Bob, just to hit the I just want to say they re he recommended. I wouldn't say he pressured it. Well, that's and I will take the comment. I did make some phone calls on my own as a board member, checking with some other companies, uh, uh, major law, uh, major uh, architects and engineering companies, and nobody supposedly had any kind of expertise. This is a whole new thing. You know, this is interesting. Not many people do this kind of thing. Okay, so that's so he well, we didn't pressure it. He recommended the company from past experience, and but we did look into some a few other companies. I did personally, and I think a couple other people on the board did. Okay. No, my, my position. He asked me to consider. Them. That's all. I said, look at it. I do some but he didn't tell you about right, the Murphy on, connection. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me talk. So are you backpedaling? In other words, he didn't pressure you now because that's what was printed in the paper. Right. He just no recommendation. We, we, right. At the time he recommended it. Were you aware of these campaign contributions? Yes or no? No. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Thank you, sir. I was wondering, too, if, were you aware of the Murphy-Murphy connection? Yes or no? I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Were you, you step over here so they can hear you. Were you aware of the J.J. Murphy, Patrick Murphy connection? No. Okay. Who authorized up to $400 per hour for J.J. Murphy? Nobody? Fox they were Rogers. hired by Fox Rothschild. Yeah, that's our. Well, that's so four hundred dollars an hour is what you came up with. Sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna would, I, I want to make it so you can uh, have have your say. So, would it be possible for me to just let you? 
you know, make your points, and then we'd be glad to try to address them either here or afterwards. Just, so, just, just for sure. comparison, okay. I talked to a police officer the other day. Yes, sir. He, uh, th now, he's, he's been a veteran. He makes $35 an hour. Mm. J.J. Murphy's making $400 an hour, uh, potentially. And it's just... Sure, it's hard to compare them. Well, yeah. yeah. Think of that. I, I, who who, who gives more than a police it? officer? He may be a teacher, but you know, Can't that's you important. JJ <laughs> don't even have a degree, does he? I have, I, I, have, I, don't know, I, have some, I have more qualifications than him. If you somebody that knows the city, parking authority doesn't know the city. No, they, they, they you, do. Mr. Katarski, you said that you're a financial analyst, right? Okay, and you live in the city. <laughs> Why not you? <laughs> not politically connected. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Well, I'm sorry. His brother so, doesn't own the firm. Well, do you? <laughs> so, uh, I see. So you're concerned about J.J. Uh, Murphy's uh, qualifications, it sounds like. Uh, that's one well, Nobody's worth uh, $400 an hour. What does he have, a BA degree? No. Okay. Well, okay. And, and so that's one area of concern. Did you have another area of concern, or was that the principal? Well, it's just it's for you. The, the fact that uh, he gets paid so much. Okay. The fact that people here were lied to. Uh, the, the, the parking authority didn't know that there was a Murphy Murphy connection. I mean, it, this just smells really bad, top to bottom. Sure. And you know, people need to start being honest and uh, do the right thing. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, other other comments? Anybody else like to speak? I'm the host. Oh, well, sir, you no. hired you no, hired him as a you, you thought his, he was worth that much money an hour? And Pardon me, sir. Wilkes you didn't know any of the situation about money in Wilkes-Barre, yet you send a guy in here and he's going to charge you charge the city three hundred dollars an hour or five hundred. Yes. You thought he was that well? Well, I, it, you it, didn't know him. Oh no, I absolutely. Not only do I know J.J. Murphy, but J.J. Murphy uh, actually. Uh, it's interesting on your point. He was last week in Chicago speaking. We got the bill to a group of uh, of uh, professionals on successful public-private partnerships. What's interesting to note is that Wilkes-Barre is a national model for how to utilize uh, video surveillance to support local police. He's and also on the board of that company. No, he's actually not, but the point is that... What do you mean, a, a, your paper's a liar? He resigned. I'm sorry. He resigned. I, I, I he was just, on the board. So I want to respond to you, which is that, so it's interesting to note that J.J. was also involved in the call center, that public-private partnership. He, he was, I guess during his, his uh, time with, with the mayor, under the mayor's leadership, involved in, uh, in uh, three public-private partnerships. So that is partly why, and then the, the other piece is, I would just tell you that the parking authority has their responsibilities, but also their other careers and their jobs. They do this for free. So they're not able to, as we need, sort of. Uh, do you, do you know the, the history of the call center? Uh, no, sir, not as you do. Well, just look into that. Okay. He wasn't very, that wasn't very successful. So I'm just I have one last question, if I may. Any further right. input? My last question is why did JJ send all of his bills to Fox and then one final bill to this authority? Why not send all bills to Fox since they're the ones that hired him? And if the parking authority decides to end that, they're stuck paying JJ. Why is the parking authority accepting bills from goals? They didn't hire goals. They had no part in this. In, in fact, your arms were literally twisted by the corrupt Fox Rothschild firm. Paul, would I be able to just make one final comment? Just, to, uh, just so you know, Alan, the, the call yes, center that, that you talk about yes, sir. went bankrupt. Okay, and the expertise that was done in that mm -hmm. almost ruined the city. Okay. If it wasn't for Wilkes College coming in and buying it, as a matter of fact, it was breaking the city every month with the payments. So that's the expertise in J.J. Murphy and the former administration. So just so you understand, because you may not be aware yourself of what's going on.
Any more input from anyone? Uh, one, one last thing. Uh, you know, just one, I'm just sitting back here neutral. It seems to be J.J. Murphy seems to be the center of a great deal of discussion. One question, why is he not here? Number two, will the community have an opportunity to address this either with the board and with him here so as I can see you know, some of the questions and tensions of the community can some be, be answered directly so they can have some closure to this because I think this continue as your meetings go on. And as long as the public will continue going, I think it's going to take away what, whatever you're trying to do here without J.J. Murphy. So I'm just putting that out there to you. I, I don't know. Maybe this was addressed beforehand. But uh, can we see all of his timesheets? They're available on the Times Leader's website. They are now? They went up today. Okay. Bill of Oil did that. Thank you, Bill. Just to, uh, if, I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, one thing just taking your comment to heart. We actually were thinking a little bit about that earlier in the week. And one uh, question is, we have a, a goal today, of, uh, which we're going to start on with the Parking Authority business, just on the concession of, uh, you know, just ratifying the parking consulting contract, hopefully approving the release of the request for qualifications, and uh, whatever other issues the Parking Authority has. That said, um, the RFQ is just an opportunity for us to find out in the market if there is interest. And uh, there's been some thought that we may want to have in the next two weeks a public information session on the request for qualifications, where since people are going to be responding and mailing it in, and we haven't committed to do a deal, that's not what this is about. We're committing to find out if there is a deal to be done, and then let the parking authority look at those options. Uh, that may be a good opportunity for any questions that we have more detail, you know, that we that the if, public wants uh, to do. So that's something we may. If uh, we do that, can we ask JJ to donate his time to this authority for that open meeting? We do not want to be billed to hear his mouth. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yeah.